Those who invest in Hydrograph Clean Power believe this company holds a revolutionary product, but it's just graphene, right? Lots of companies can make that. So what makes them so special? In this video, we're going to break down the science behind what makes Hydrograph Clean Power's graphene so unique. According to the Graphene Council, graphene refers to a single plane of sp2 carbon bonded atoms in a hexagonal honeycomb lattice. That's a mouthful, so let's break it down piece by piece. A single plane means that graphene is a two-dimensional material and only one atom thick. Hexagonal honeycomb lattice can be thought of just like a beehive pattern. sp2 carbon bonded atoms is a bit more technical, but it's very important, so let's break it down. There's four bonds on a carbon atom. These bonds are what holds atoms together. This is done by atoms sharing these bonds on their outer shell. Now, these atoms can do this several different ways, one of which is an sp2 bond. This means three of those bonds form flat at a 120 degree angle, which creates that 2D honeycomb pattern. But what about that fourth bond? This is the important bond that gives graphene its incredible abilities. This is a pi bond that allows electrons to move freely above or below sheets of graphene. They can do things like help conduct electricity or bond to other surfaces. The electronic as well as the bonding properties of graphene are dictated by these freely moving fourth bonds. Now that you understand sp2 bonding, what happens to graphene when there's impurities in the graphene? Well, it starts to get some sp3 bonds. In an sp3 bond, you don't have that free electron to move around. So this is what graphene would look like with some sp3 bonds. For electrons, this is like expecting to take a drive on a nice open highway, but then there's an unexpected road closure. Now those electrons have to take city streets with lots of turns, traffic, and intersections. This is what it's like for electrons moving in low-quality graphene, and the lower the quality, the worse the traffic is. For bonding, we will use a headliner in a car as an example. In a new car, the headliner is held up nice and tight to the roof of the car. This is just like graphene with good sp2 bonding. And the fourth bond we talked about earlier? Well, that's the glue. And when the glue starts to fail in some places, it's like graphene with some sp3 bonding. It can still hold on, but it's not doing a great job. This is why near-perfect sp2 bonding graphene is so crucial, and as far as I know, Hydrograph Clean Power is the only one who can consistently make it. And not only consistently make it, they can make a ton of it, literally. By the end of 2026, they expect to have a capacity of 350 tons per year, with the ability to scale with demand. Some people like to compare other stocks, such as Graphene Manufacturing Group or GraphJet to Hydrograph. Not only have these companies failed to publish the sp2 bonding properties of their graphene, but their combined capacity will be a fraction of what Hydrograph will be within a year. Now, the last thing to touch on, what about graphite? Graphite is just a bunch of layers of graphene, so why not just make it from that? Well, here's the issue. Those layers are held very tightly together by what are known as van der Waals forces. This just means the molecules in each layer of graphene are attracted to each other. Now, we could try to peel these layers apart, and it does happen with varying success and a lot of energy, but it's still difficult. To understand this, go take a roll of some two or three ply toilet paper. Now try to separate the layers of the toilet paper without damaging them. Odds are you'll damage some of the layers doing this. And if you don't, you probably spent a lot of time and a lot of energy getting those nice clean layers. This is similar to producing graphene from graphite. And the damage that occurs from separating the layers is hurting our precious SP2 bonds. And that's why it hasn't worked. So hopefully now you have a little better understanding of what makes Hydrograph's graphene better. You also now know why graphene has yet to be adopted in a large manner despite all the benefits. If you have something to add, want me to correct something, or just want to say hi, feel free to comment below. Like and subscribe as well. Thanks for watching.